Hello friends! Today is another video on the Swan Lake doll, a little bit different this time. I'm going to show you how I boxed her. Um, I've been finding it kind of difficult to find inspiration and kind of like information about boxing dolls and trying to figure out how to do my own packaging. So I thought this might help other people and you might find it interesting. Um, I have looked for a very long time for commercial doll boxes and they were all either too expensive or not quite what I was looking for and I, sh I really had a hard time finding things. I know Stitch Wick Witch, my buddy, uses wine bottle boxes which is a pretty good fit. They're a, a little bit bigger so if you're putting other things in with the doll that's not a bad idea but you have to order them in bulk. And then for this doll particularly I wanted kind of custom boxing. This was a fail, don't use PVA glue, it doesn't work. I used cat food boxes actually to make the main parts of the boxes. In my head I was kind of like I wanted a fold out one but actually this way just with a separate lid um, is easier to calculate because you can just draw around the bottom of the box to make the lid. I wanted to have my colours as well. I use um, like a mint teal or teal green and um, pink and everything and I wanted to try and have that in the boxes it was more important to me that the inside of the box looked good and that the doll was safe than the outside looking good I talked about the wings being separate as well and I wanted to make sure that the box for that was stable and separate making this box I kind of figured out a little bit about the tabs here I made inserts for the bottom of each of the boxes and then I'm adding ribbons so like you know with commercial doll packaging there's like elastic bands or the tags that hold them in. Um, I received a doll from Space Neko and she um, tied it in with ribbons. I'm using like I think like forest green ribbons as well just to keep with the colour theme. So for the tabs, I decided that I wanted the outside tabs on the box to be on like the um, the short sides. So what I needed to do was on the long sides, add the width of the cardboard to either end to make sure that the overlap would allow the tabs to like be glued nicely there. It's kind of a nice touch with ribbons as well. It just looks a bit more luxurious. like. Dolls are um, kind of expensive when you do them like this and I think everything needs to feel expensive. And then I got um, poster paper in mint. I struggled trying to figure this out first. I tried to use a glue stick to stick it in but it was kind of wrinkling the paper because of the moisture. Then I remembered I had strong mounting masking, uh, masking tape, double sided tape so I decided to use that instead. The first box I did the big box first and then the um, wings box second. When I did the second one I put a little bit of paper in the corners first and then added the main pieces which made it have a lot better coverage and look, look a lot more finished. My swap partner has received this doll a year late. Um, the tracking information told me it's there. Um, I'm yet to hear from them. I don't know if they got it like last thing at night or something um, but yeah I need to make sure that it arrived safely and if it didn't uh, try and fix any of the issues that happened in postage. I was quite happy with how the boxes turned out like I said I, I'm not that bothered about the outside. I think there is a few ways that I could have um, made the outside look better which I might try next time I'm not sure but yeah I, I was quite happy with it I got this um, duct tape it's duck brand and it's covered in unicorn so I thought that was kind of cute and a good way to stabilize the lids so this is me just um, cutting those ribbons to um, go through I'm melting the ends it's a plastic satin ribbon like a polyester satin ribbon so to make sure that they don't fray and then once those edges are melted it's kind of stiff enough to push through those holes. I measured uh, before like where I wanted the ribbons to be popping up to hold the pieces securely. 
and then I just tied them with like a single bow. I gave them a bit of a test shake just to make sure that like nothing was going to move around. And, um, and on the back of this one, because uh, the kind of distance between the holes was so close, I added a bit more duct tape to kind of stabilize that. I think you can probably get away with just um, doing the neck and, and the waist, but I added some to the legs because um, she's got so much um, modification. I didn't want that to get bashed around. So that's those in the box. I think they look quite nice. I'm quite happy with how they look open, closed, not sure. You have to let me know what, what you think. She's had her eyes glossed as well. I did that before I um, boxed her. So this was a box that I received that wasn't quite big enough. Um, you can like change the size of a box quite easily. So I did that and then I was just kind of trying to package all the extras. So I added some fabric and lace and then some doll buttons, a face mask that I made, uh, lots of enamel charms, lots of stickers, and then a lot, a lot of chocolate. <laughs> Um, when I was packaging from Japan, I'd send Japanese candies and I talked to my swap partner and I was like, I've, my, I've got my Japanese candies for you at my mum's house, but I can't get there. Would you want to wait? And they said, no, they want the box and the doll. So I put British candies in. So let me know what you think in the comments. Let me know what kind of packaging you use or what kind of packaging you've seen and if you have any tips for mine because I'm not totally sure. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!